If you have watched the Furin anime and read the Furin manga, you would know that both the anime and manga were amazing. One can even say that the Freerun anime was a perfect anime adaptation. They followed the manga really really closely. So close in fact that there's barely anything to compare and contrast and this video should not have existed. But there were some, let's just say, minor differences that made one version better than the other. So which is it? Which is better? The Freerun anime or the manga? Let's talk about that. Let's first talk about the structural changes. For example, if there were some scenes that were removed in the anime or maybe extra scenes that were added, and by extra scenes, I don't mean things like a more thought out fight scene because the fight scenes are there both in the anime and manga, but it was just visually presented differently, which I will also talk about later in the video. As of this writing, there are 128 chapters of the Freerun manga, and chapters 1 through 60 were the ones that were adapted to the 28 episode long anime. Most episodes adapted 2 chapters worth of the manga. There were some exceptions, for example chapter 1 where it is mainly an adaptation of the first chapter but also included a bit of the second chapter, and there were other episodes where they adapted 3 chapters. This would explain why they reached chapter 60 in 28 episodes. In my opinion, however, I believe that they could get away with adapting on average 3 chapters per episode because the chapters are pretty short, consisting of around 17 to 18 pages, and they are most of the times about pretty mundane events. Take a look at episode 4. That episode adapted chapter 6, 7, and almost all of chapter 8, and there were no issues whatsoever. The final episode completely adapted chapter 58, 59, and 60, again with no issues whatsoever. So I believe they could have squeezed it a bit more and fully fit 3 chapters in an episode. This would mean they are adapting 84 chapters in the 28 episodes, which would be around 10 to 12 volumes. It might seem a lot, but I think with free run it is possible. The main issue that I can think of is that by ending at around chapter 80, they would be ending in the middle of a significant arc, which is definitely not ideal. But that's not the entire problem. If they don't end on chapter 80, they would have to end at the previous significant arc that will be the Divine Revolte arc which in my opinion is not as huge as the first class Mage Exam arc. So it might have been the right decision from the producers to decide to end the first season of Furon at the end of the Mage Exams, especially because at the end of that arc there was this emotional moment of each of the newly introduced characters saying goodbye to one another and moving on with their journey. So the current adaptation had a much better end point than if they were to end the season at one of the following arcs and definitely better than if they were to end it at one of the more mundane stories. A part of me still thinks that they could get away with 3 chapters per episode. If it is not a constant 3 chapters, maybe they could alternate between 2 to 3 chapters per episode. Currently, they are at an average of 2.14 chapters per episode. I think they could increase it a bit, maybe to 2.5 chapters per episode because the anime does feel slow and I feel like it could have proceeded much faster. But now let's talk about the scenes themselves and if the anime made any changes to them. The anime adaptation held to the manga very tightly. They did not mess around with the scenes much. Almost all the panels in the manga were in the anime and they generally followed the order of the panels just like how they were in the manga. An example when the anime made a more significant change was in the beginning of episode 2. Freerun was giving Fern some advice on using magic in front of a waterfall before proceeding to a montage of Freerun staying with Hyder and Fern. In the manga, Freerun's advice was cut short and they were still on the edge of the cliff. This one minute long conversation was not in the manga. It is not a scene that had a huge impact on the story or on the characters but it is just a nice extra wholesome scene and Fern looks really adorable. One moment when the anime changed to an entire scene was in episode 13. Stark was trying to persuade Sain to join the party and he had to gamble for it. Fern then heard Stark shout so she woke Freerun up and they ran downstairs to see what happened to Stark only to find him and Sain naked after gambling their clothes away. In the manga, Freerun and Fern were already seen walking on the streets and then they came across Stark. The manga did not mention if they were looking for him or not and the two of them just came across Stark unintentionally. The manga did not show that Fearn was asleep, that Stark was shouting, and that Fern had to wake Fearn up to look for Stark. The anime just added these extra details. The general idea of Fern and Fearn finding Stark naked is the same, but it's almost a different scene entirely because of the different execution. 
It's just surprising for Freerun that the anime made a different version of the scene considering the anime literally follows every single movement of the characters very closely. Though neither the anime or the manga was better here in my opinion, the anime created more humor but it was already pretty funny how they did it in the manga so both versions were fine. There is one scene that was a slightly questionable change. During the first exam, in the anime, it was Wirbel who ran to attack Ubo, while in the manga, it was Ubo who ran towards Wirbel and striked first. It's just a minor switch but it's pretty impactful to the characters because whoever attacked first has the bigger bloodlust. And between the two characters, I'm pretty sure Ubo is the closer one to resemble a psychopath. Wirbel is actually a pacifist if he has no reason to kill, so it would be more logical that Evil would be the character to strike first. So this might be the one and only unwanted change where the manga version is better. And the only time that I discovered the anime not including some panels was in episode 19, during the montage of Denkin and his group searching for Freerun's group, they did not include some of the shots that were supposed to be part of the montage. It's really insignificant, I don't think it would make much a difference if they included it or not. It's just, you know, considering they have been adapting every single panel up until now, seeing some panels not adapted is somehow weird. There might be other times when some panels were also excluded but really nothing to make a fuss about. These sort of changes where the anime either added an entirely new scene, or removed the scene, or changed a major element of the scene, these sort of changes to the manga did not even occur that often. Because that's just how closely the anime followed the manga. Sometimes the anime changed the order of the scenes, but again, it wasn't anything huge that affected the vibe or the mood. And these changes were not horrible. Excluding the scene with Verbal attacking Yubel, the other changes were positive changes that further adds to the moment. So structurally, the anime and the manga is basically one for one. Some changes here and there, but you wouldn't miss anything much if you didn't read the manga, and likewise if you didn't watch the anime. They're both the same, none was better than the other. Actually, you might miss more if you don't watch the anime because of the visuals, which is the next point I want to talk about. Changes in the visuals basically refers to changes on how the scene is presented in the anime. Some scenes look completely different in the anime, but nevertheless, such scenes were also in the manga. The best example will be the fight scenes. The fight scenes were there in the manga, but it was extended with better choreography and animation in the anime. It's the most prominent visual change for obvious reasons. The animation is damn good. I'll just take one scene as a comparison between the anime and manga because my point goes for every single fight scene. I shall choose this scene, the fight between Stark and the Solar Dragon. This is what it looks like in the manga. Stark slashes the dragon's claws, he jumps, he makes a big slash, bang, the dragon is dead. It's a standard sequence, nothing special. And this is the anime version. <laughs> Technically, it is still the same sequence, he cuts the dragon's claws and he somehow gets over the dragon and slashes him, but it's just a million times better. The music, the sound effects, and also a bit extra with the choreography with Stark hanging onto the dragon and getting thrown upwards and almost being hit by the dragon's breath. This compared to this, it is a massive step up. And this goes for every single fight scene in the free run anime, a major improvement from the manga. The manga wasn't bad, it is completely fine how it was, and the anime did not have to go that far, but they did, and it's amazing. That's the most prominent change in terms of the visual differences. Respect to the producers for deciding to give a little extra for the fight scenes. Another visual improvement would be in the scenery. I don't know if other readers feel the same, but the manga is very focused on the characters. I feel like with the manga, we are just concentrating on what the characters are doing and we don't really care where they are and what the location looks like. Manga readers, let's be real, the background work of the Freon manga is pretty standard. It's good enough so that we have context but not to the point where we would spend time to appreciate the scenery. The only time when we would take a moment to observe the visuals would only probably in the beginning when Freon was still with Himmel and the others and they were watching the stars. Only anime watchers might be confused but despite the focus on visuals in the anime, the Freon manga is not a visually intense manga and that's where the improvement lies. The 
put it simply, the anime looks beautiful, much more visually appealing than the manga. I feel like I understand the character's location much better in the anime. For example, during the second exam, I didn't realize the entrance to the dungeon was that huge. Now that I revisited this scene in the manga, I found out that it was not as huge as portrayed in the anime but when I was reading it, I didn't care about the size of the entrance. I only cared about the fact that they were entering a dungeon. But in the anime, you just can't ignore the scenery of the entrances and that gives the anime version a little more depth as we, the audience, much better understand where the characters are. Similarly, the room right before the room of Ruin's clone, I didn't know that room was an exact square. The manga only showed the walls and the door so we didn't exactly see that the room was square. We didn't get the whole picture of the location. I know there's not much significance in knowing if a room looks square or not, but firstly, it's more aesthetically pleasing, and secondly, it just feels nice to better understand where the characters are. A more practical example of this is in this flashback of Rioran with her teacher Flama. I only noticed this when watching the anime. I noticed that the characters in the background were wearing ancient clothing, either ancient Greece or ancient Middle East. Whatever kind of clothing it was, it was ancient. I mean, I know while I was reading the manga that Flama was so old that people started to doubt her existence. But I didn't realize until I watched the anime that she lived a really really long time ago if the people were still wearing such old fashioned clothing. Despite Flama also wearing this kind of clothing in the manga, my inner consciousness thought that it might be around 300 to 400 years ago, at least not too far back. Because it's even possible for people in the current era to wear those kinds of clothing. But seeing the ancient building structures and the ancient clothing of the background character, this scene has to be from around at least a thousand years ago, which just shows us the audience how old Freeran is and how long ago Flama lived. And this realization was only thanks to the anime because of the extra visual changes in the anime, which is why the scenery and background work is pretty important to understanding the story. I mean, we're talking about the visuals here, so what's important is looking good, but it's amazing how the visuals in the anime boosts the audience's understanding of the story. The visuals of the manga are good, but the visuals of the anime are amazing. The only time when I preferred how the manga looked was this panel of evil right here. And this is what this panel looked like in the anime version. I mean, the manga is better. Manga. Anime. Manga. Anime. Manga. Manga better. Oh, there's also this scene just shortly after where I think the manga version is better. This is the scene in the anime. And this is the manga version. Those were some very harsh words from Furen and I felt it much better in the manga. I think it's because the anime is just too brightly colored compared to the black and white manga and the duration of the shot of Furen walking away was much too short before it went to the shot of Himmel. So I don't think the audience had enough time to fully grasp how sharp Furen's words were. There's also something about the angle of the shot in the manga panel that really makes it such a sad scene. And the shot of Himmel as well. In the anime, Himmel looked like he was smiling in a more positive sense, but in the manga, Himmel's face showed a bit more pain, sadness, and loneliness as he heard Freewen's heartless statement. But those were just a couple of scenes where the manga was visually better. In general though, the visuals of the anime was incredible and was a huge step up from the manga. So anime versus manga, the better visuals go to the anime. The next part I want to talk about is the characters. Just like with the structure, because the anime followed the manga very closely, they were pretty much the same. They didn't change the characters' personalities nor did the characters feel different to how I imagined them to be. Stark, exactly how I imagined him to be. Himmel, exactly how I imagined him to be. Aizen, Land, Aura, Zeria, Flama, Denken, Sensei, Sain, Lernan, Virabal, Richter, their voices were perfect. Yubel's voice was not completely how I imagined it to be, it was different, but I definitely do like what they did with it. Freewin and Fern also had appropriate voices, but maybe they should have been slightly more dynamic, especially during the comedic scenes. They are pretty monotonous characters, but there were some scenes where their voices weren't exactly how I wanted them to be, and it should have had more figure to it, just a slight more strength to it. For the most part, their voices were great but some scenes just didn't reach my expectations which was among others because of their voices. It is probably because they interpreted the scene differently and guided the voice to sound that way which isn't bad and is completely fine. 
Yuba's voice was different from what I expected. It was different but good and I liked it. But for Free Run and Fern, it was just ever so slightly different but I do prefer my interpretation of their voices. I also want to talk about Hyder. Now, Hyder was interesting because he had two voices. I don't mean two voice actors, I meant he had a serious talking voice where his voice went deeper and he had his more comedic voice where it was lighter. And lighter rhymed with Hyder, which is why I preferred if he constantly used his lighter voice even when he was giving his serious lecture. Despite having serious moments, Hyder is a pretty comedic character so I believe a lighter voice would be more fitting. So he should have used his lighter voice but in a more serious tone for those more serious talks. Deeper, sure, but that might have been too deep. Like with Freerun and Fern, Hyder's unexpected voice didn't particularly bug me because regardless of the moments where I don't think their voices were suitable, they were acceptable and I can see them talking and having those voices. The only character voice that fairly bugged me was this character's voice here, Edo. For some reason, her voice was so much more monotone in the anime than how I imagined her voice in my head. I imagined her voice to be a slightly higher pitch and has a bit more anger and intensity to it. Looking back at the manga, yeah, her face is pretty unemotional so the anime interpretation is correct but I don't know. Personally, she could use a bit more intensity and sharpness to her voice. I just thought her persona would be more of the sharp-tongued, straightforward character instead of the more monotonous type. But whatever, no big deal. So in conclusion, characters anime versus manga, I would say it's a draw. The character's personality in the anime are completely the same as in the manga, no changes there. Their voices match their character and they were for the most part exactly how I imagined them to be, so no problems there. But I am slightly leaning towards victory for the manga because even though the character's voice did generally fit their character, there were some moments where I preferred if these certain characters were to speak in a certain tone. When watching the anime exclusively and not comparing it to the manga, it is not a problem. It is fine as it is in the anime version, but if I were to compare them, which I am, I do prefer my interpretation of the characters' voices in the manga. So with a slight slight advantage, the manga had better characters just because they had better voices. Beside the visuals, this is where the majority of the contrast occurs. Structure and characters are pretty technical, as long as they follow the manga there wouldn't be much differences and character voices are, you know, you can overlook them. But how a person feels as he or she reads a manga can vary from person to person and it can vary significantly. Maybe for one, it's a very emotional and sad scene but for the other, it's, it's emotional, it's sad but it's not that sad. How I understood and read the manga was that it wasn't as slow and chill as how the anime brought it up to be. Sure, it was a slice of life series and it was filled with mundane events, but to me it does not translate to the easy going mellow vibes in the anime. Slice of life does not mean slow and relaxing. And I don't think Freeran is slow and relaxing. At least that's not how I read the manga. The manga was not slow, it wasn't fast, it was averagely paced, and it only became slower and faster according to the scene. It felt slower in more thought provoking and emotional scenes and faster during serious arcs. In the anime, it just felt overall slow. The anime had this slow vibe and they directed this slow atmosphere incredibly well. It was almost an Iyashuke, you can argue it is Iyashuke, but after reading the manga, that is not how I would prefer to experience Freerun. I can see the direction they're taking with the Freerun anime and it is fine if you guys prefer it this way, but personally, I don't think it needed to be that slow. I actually prefer if it didn't have that mundane atmosphere. It would have been fine if they alternated the tone and made it a bit more dynamic but it was all around pretty slow. Though I'll admit, there were some scenes where the vibes in the anime were just much better, but then again, there were many if not more scenes in the manga that felt more impactful than the scenes in the anime. The scenes or moments where the manga was better were Hyder's death, Sain's backstory except for the moment when he got slapped, Sain just somehow felt much more significant in the manga even though it was a one for one adaptation, the scene where they parted with Sain was somehow sadder in the manga, both times when Freerun and Himmel watched the Starry Night was better in the manga. 
the scene where Freerun and Fern were eating together and the scene where Freerun and Fern were watching the sunrise together were both better in the manga, and the one one hundredth moment beside almost every other thought-provoking scene was clearer in the manga. The only moments where it hit harder in the anime were excluding the action scenes, Himmel's death, the reveal to Flamma's notes, the dance moment between Stark and Fern, the parting way scene at the end of the exam arc, the moment when Freerun was searching for her lost ring, the moment when Himmel placed the ring on Freerun, and the flower magic scene. That was a fair amount, I mean naturally since the visuals and the background music were amazing, but even if we are to include the fight scenes, the weight from all the slice of life scenes that I experienced better with the manga just outweighs the moments I enjoyed in the anime, and almost every single funny moment was better in the manga. One of, if not the most important aspect of Freerun is the philosophical messages about life. And as I have said, I was able to grasp them much better in the manga, probably because there's the advantage of reading and simply not being distracted by the visuals. The fact that the anime was slower than the manga is the main reason why I preferred the vibes as I read the manga. But I also understood the contemplative nature of Freerun much better in the manga. Therefore, Freerun anime vs manga, which had the better vibes, the manga wins. So after everything said, after comparing the anime and manga, the structure, the visuals, the characters, and the general vibe in watching and reading the two mediums, which is better, the Furon anime or the manga? My answer would be the manga. This does not mean the anime was horrible. The anime was nice and it's practically a one-to-one -one adaptation of the manga. It is just that I prefer reading the manga, mainly because of my last point regarding the difference in tone between the two versions. I can see people reading the manga and understand it just how the anime depicted the series to be, slow and mellow, and there were times where I actually enjoyed the relaxing atmosphere. However, that was not how I interpreted the series, and to be honest, I am not a huge fan of that slow interpretation. The highlight for Freerun was for me, the philosophical messages and the adventure fantasy story itself. The adventure fantasy story is the same in the anime as it is in the manga, but the philosophical messages were much more inspiring in the manga. So all in all, the manga is better. What did you guys think though? If you have watched the anime and read the manga, which do you guys think was better? Honestly, you might not find a lot of differences between the anime and manga because it was a great adaptation. From the production side of things, the anime was miles better than the manga, but because of the slight differences in the mood and because I understood the message much better in the manga, personally, I had a better experience reading the manga. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about the whole topic of the free run anime manga comparison down in the comment section. And as usual, don't forget to leave the video a like and subscribe for more anime stuff.